today we're going to move all the tools out of this tent, take it down, try to get this place cleaned up. Let's do it. Let me tell you, this was super awesome to get this tent structure removed, pull all the tools out, organize them, vacuum up all the debris, clean up all the dust. Uh, I needed to make more space so I could work on the deck and uh, it really helped me really felt like I was getting close to the end of the project because now the hot tub was all exposed. Check it out. We got ourselves a hot tub. So what's left is replace this decking. We're going to scribe fit it all to this rock. Level this concrete out with a little drain lip and then build a frame to support stairs and a deck that goes around. And then over here, oh, so these two boards here, this stone are pulled back a little bit. I have this air inlet fitting, so I'm going to run this air inlet tube for the Venturi jets over here, up under there, up and out and I'll probably hit this with some black spray paint so it's not as visible. And then, you know, when, when this is gardened in, it'll disappear. You won't even see it. Um, okay, yeah, I'm loving, I'm loving having this tent structure down. I mean, it really looks like it's almost, almost done now. Okay, time to work. Originally, we were just gonna hide this air tube underneath the deck, but a friend of ours who, who had been working on hot tubs for years uh, reminded us that when a bunch of people got in the hot tub, it would overflow, so we moved it up in the back so the water level wouldn't rise as much. Uh, before I could frame the deck, I wanted to level this pad out, so I added some concrete primer and mixed up a bunch of concrete leveler and then poured it all in make a nice level surface so the water could sheet off and it looks so much better. Then piling a bunch of boulders and landscaping some of the beds. Once the scaffold was down I could really clean up the landscaping around the tub and prepare for the deck install. I did a little bit of, little bit of landscaping. Removed the plywood that was covering the deck frame cleaned it all up. Before we put all these deck boards on, we got to run the, the wires. So we're running from these disconnects, a uh, hundred amp service through this big uh, pipe. And then the generator backed up. Uh, I think it's like a 20 amp connection through this smaller pipe. So start by uh, running some conduit and then pulling some wire. Earlier in the build process, we and install these disconnects, so I'm just running the conduit and connecting the pump house and the disconnects. And um, once all the conduit was made nice and neat, we pulled the, the wire. It's number two aluminum service entrance wire for the main power supply and uh, 12 gauge three wire for the generator backup power supply and it was a uh, it was a bit of a bit of tugging with some lube to get these wires through that conduit so now that everything under the deck is buttoned up we'll put the deck back on uh, I think the easiest way well I'm debating whether or not I'm just gonna move this whole thing over that way I I'll have to unscrew and rescrew a lot of boards, but I won't have to have any face screws on this section because the, this deck uses these little clips. Um, and when you join the two boards, you, uh, you'll have to do some face screws. And there's a couple of little dings in the deck from the excavation. So there might yet need to be face screws anyway. So I, I, I still haven't figured that one out. But then over here, just return the decking, although it's going to be scribe fit to the stone, it's going to look beautiful. And then over here, we're actually going to have a staircase come down 
the trapezoidal shape that's in line with the hexagon and that's going to be fit to the frame of this upper deck fit to these stones um, some of this wood will come up in order to save the material and that'll be framed directly to the existing deck frame kind of non-traditional way to build uh this deck you know typically you'd you'd frame up a deck with the joists being supported by posts and beams whereas we're just supporting it on a directly on a concrete slab it is actually stood up off the concrete slab with these uh these little ties that are then screwed in to the concrete uh, that keeps some space between the pressure treated joists and the deck so there, there's no water collection uh, to deteriorate those over time there is an australian product that can that has a built-in adjustable screw to hold these off i think it's i think it's pronounced like clever clip like bob's uncle using those would have been helpful to level all these uh joy supports out but uh you know i didn't have the time to wait for those to be shipped so i'm putting in some angled joists because the not only to wrap around the skimmer there but also to support the the deck boards which are not they're not at a normal angle they they follow the line of the hot tub which we'll, which we'll see later next i could cut the stringers for the staircase this was a bit of a tricky uh, fabrication process because there were two similar stringers but with mirrored angles and then there was one stringer in the middle and because this is a trapezoidal shaped staircase it, you know, it wasn't as simple as just cutting three stringers the same size. The geometry required that the two outside ones be longer and then I cut away the deck boards and Fastening these to the existing joists added some additional sister supports for the deck. And this, this just required a lot of tweaking because not only was I trying to get the spacing for the boards to fit just right, but also to wrap the back of the stringers around these rocks that had been put in place and secure everything that to the existing deck. And uh, it, it ended up working out great, but it was a, it was more of a trial and fit than a, than a build to exact plan. Last thing to do on the deck was to attach the small joists to these supported joist hangers. I saw a great tip on one of the Essential Craftsman videos where he cut a little groove in the in the end of each joist to attach the joist hangers to, which really sped up the process. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks again for watching. Next, we're going to take a little bit of a break from this hot tub and move on to some of the high-tech control parts. So, see you next time. Hi, if you liked this video, please let me know by clicking that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the red subscribe button. Please check the notes below the video for more ways to keep this channel going. Your support is greatly appreciated. And always, never stop building.